Well, thanks for coming out to our channel. Thanks for watching. We're going to do a two-part expose of a Enochian magic square that relates to the Great Pyramid and ultimately relates to the number 111. Now, I'm bringing together a lot of different pieces here. Uh, that's one reason I'm breaking this up into two videos uh, so that it can be digested maybe a little bit more. So, Let's start here's the Anakian Square. It's six rows, it's six columns, it's anciently associated with the Great Pyramid and, and Enoch. And so uh, it's populated by the numbers 1 through 36, which seem to be just in a random order here. So what could be in this square? Okay, well, what I did is I, I decided to connect the numbers with lines. So I just took a straight edge and went 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and so on. I continued all the way up to 36. Now after I did that, I evaluated which lines went, were gone over twice and the fact that I saw a pyramid there. So I highlighted the pyramid and I highlighted the lines that were gone over twice in just copying the numbers 1 to 36. And it's amazing. You've got these four horizontals and uh, a pyramid that's about the angle of you know, the Great Pyramid. Well, uh, if you've seen our previous videos, you know that uh, there's an overlay that Da Vinci uh, plainly intended to be with the Great Pyramid. And so these four horizontals and other horizontals that are on the Da Vinci drawing of the Vitruvian Man line up with actual passages and some possible unfound passages in the Great Pyramid. So it's pretty amazing. So if you've seen our other videos on that, you know, you, you know about that. Well, now to add another element here, my sister Carol told me about a year ago that she was seeing the number 111 everywhere. Now, uh, you know, I told her I'd do some research, but in the meantime, I built her a child's playhouse in her backyard. You know, she's a, a successful uh, corner office executive, and, you know, the grandkids like coming over, so I built this path, and it goes to this house. I took out a, you know, a, a window, a French window or a bay window from somewhere else, and so here she put the number 111 on there. Now, I, I'm putting this uh, sort of personalized story here to say my sister is, uh, you know, she's a capable executive, but she's a normal person. You know, she's not like uh, following, you know, spirit guides or into all kinds of crazy stuff. So for her to tell me that, you know, she's seen the number 111, what does it mean? You know, that, that's kind of interesting. You've ever had that where you see a phenomenon in your life, you want to know more about it? Okay, well, take this Enochian square and you add up all the numbers across uh, the rows, and they all equal 111. But not only that, you add up the columns, and all of them equal 111. Not only that, but the diagonals. So 14 places where you've got the number 111 in the Sinachian square, uh, which, is, which is ancient. You know, I don't know where it originated. Some people say with Enoch, you know. So there's 14 pieces. That is 14 111s. Okay, well... This obviously made me think immediately of the Osiris legend. You know, his body was cut up into 14 pieces, and uh, those 14 pieces were gathered together, you know, by Isis, and you know he was resurrected. Then. You know, the whole Phoenix Ben Ben myth, all of that. Okay, so that's kind of incredible. You've got this idea of resurrection now associated with this number 111. Now, the four horizontals that we saw there, the Jed pillar is probably one of the most famous, you know, uh, religious symbols in Egypt. And so this is the, the Jed pillar here, and I superimposed it over the Great Pyramid. So the flail and crook, you know, the symbols of the pharaoh, line up exactly the angle they're at with the air shafts coming out of the king's chamber, and the four horizontals of the Jed pillar, symbolizing resurrection, go along with those... Uh, horizontals that are in the relieving chambers uh, above the king's chamber. So it's incredible, these powerful symbols of resurrection coming along with the number 111 in the Sinachian table. And so there you can see. But then I got to thinking, okay, so the number 111 is here, but uh, you'll see that related to that, you know, is the number 111. And I thought, what if you turn it on its side? So you got the number 111 and you turn it on its side, like you transform it, you rotate it, another symbol of resurrection, you know, in math, you know, a transformation you know, like with imaginary numbers or whatever, they, you, you, you rotate them to transform them. Wow, those, the 111 lines up with those four, you know, horizontal lines that are in the Vitruvian Man, that are in the Great Pyramid, that are in the Jed Pillar. Wow. Okay. So, uh, what about that 11111, 1111? Well, first let's take 1110, okay? That's 111. That's the number we're working with. That's the number my sister was seeing. 111 times 10. Okay, that's 1110. One, one, now, 
Anytime you multiply something by 10, that magnifies it, but it keeps the same meaning. So 111 has the same meaning as 1110. It's just that the 1110 magnifies it because it's 10 times. Now, another principle I found just over the years working with numbers, when you add one to something, that means the fulfillment of that thing. It's just, I found that real in my life. You, know, you may or may not accept that, but that's, I'm just telling you, that's a principle. You add one to something, it's fulfillment. So if you add one to 1,110, you get 1,111. So there's that number. So all these are related, as you can see, to 111. 111, 1,110, and 1,111. Okay, so I constructed the Great Pyramid uh, simply by using, you know, the compass and a straight edge. Let's see, I've got a straight edge here. So um, the way you do that is you draw a vesica Pisces, and then you draw a vesica Pisces within a vesica Pisces. I left some of my construction lines on here. I know you're supposed to erase them. And so when you uh, then uh, connect the, the the middle of you know the, here's this here's the center from that center vesica Pisces. Okay, that becomes the center line of the Great Pyramid. And then when you draw this down to I had to construct a line parallel to basically the center line here. So I drew that down there. Anyways, you can see that the angle of the Great Pyramid, 51.8 degrees, is there. Uh, and then this is 1 phi and the root of phi. So we've got the phi pyramid there. Um, if you put this into real number units, okay, so you have 356 cubits. Uh, on the, on the side slope, 220 cubits for the half base and 280 cubits high. Okay, so, you know, the Great Pyramid is there. Now, the larger vesica circle is 555 feet. Uh, again, we're putting actual numbers as if we were going to draw this on the Giza Plateau. And then 555 feet for the other, so those two equal uh, 1,110 feet. So that number keeps popping up to 1,010. I've uh, got another video on this that I'm going to do. Okay, so uh, from an Indian spirit guide, I got this uh, uh, number, the nine number square here, and there's a whole lot of things about the Great Pyramid. This is the Great Pyramid Square. So, uh, for instance, uh, the perimeter of the Great Pyramid in megalithic yards is 1,110. Okay, let's take uh, 438 on this square plus 672, so you reverse it for, and then you get 1,111. So you can do the same thing with all of them. If you take 492 plus 618, again, you reverse it, it's 1,110. And if you take 276 plus 834, it equals 1,110. Okay, uh, but let's look at this another way. Take 951 plus 159. Anything that goes to the center, 951 plus 159 equals 1,010. 456 plus 654, you can do it any one of them. 852 plus 258 equals 1,110. So, uh, some amazing things about the Great Pyramid derived simply from compass and straight edge inside two Vesica Pisces. Um, sacred geometry, sacred knowledge, the Great Pyramid is amazing. Thanks for watching. Please like the video, share with friends, and hit the subscribe button. Please comment below and let us know what else you'd like to see on AIP.